Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. You know, we haven't talked to the folks at Elastify in a little while, so uh, we're in San Jose, and we thought we'd get them up on the light board and have them explain what's going on at their company. Uh, joining me in that conversation is uh, Alan Cohen. He's with Elastify. Alan, thanks for joining us. Hi, George. Thanks for inviting us. So, Alan, why don't you tell us what's going on at Elastify? So, at Elastify, we just announced our Elastify Cloud File Service, a fully managed service native into the cloud, so that essentially users that are moving their applications to the cloud can use file systems in exactly the same way as they use them on-prem. Let's say a user has a WordPress application that he wants to deploy on cloud, or any HCI application such as EDA, or if he wants to deploy Kubernetes in cloud but use persistent storage, Elastifile will provide the native file system, deliver it as a service, and allow that user to consume it easily. Okay, so explain to me the fundamental change from before to what the service is. What's the key difference there? So the key difference is that we are now a fully managed service. What that means is that from the user's perspective, they are actually purchasing what they want to purchase, a certain capacity of storage with high performance. Everything else is managed by Elastifile. The user does not need to deploy clusters for his storage, does not need to manage the storage itself. He would simply ask Elastifile through the cloud console for a certain capacity of storage. We would launch the clusters required for providing that service in whatever zone the user needed that service. So as you know, all of these clouds have multiple regions, multiple zones within those regions, and users want service within their particular zones. Elastifile as a cloud native solution will essentially deploy the required elements needed from the cloud for the zone that the user needs them, package them as a file service, and exposes them to the applications as a native file service through NFS or SMB or any other usual protocol that the user is used to using. So then, uh, so I guess a key thing is that obviously that's a much more turnkey approach than, than the uh, prior experience. And then I, I would assume then that that's just a quicker time to uh, data and time to production for that, for that customer, right? Exactly. So users in the cloud are used to requesting new services and getting them immediately when they need them and at the amount that they need them. Now Elastifile, because it's a cloud native solutions, we can do that and we can do that where it's needed. So any amount that the users need at a certain point will simply use the cloud resources in the zone, in the region that they need them, spin them up immediately, expose them to uh, the user. If the user subsequently wants to add capacity, Elastifile will manage that at the background. We can scale out the size of the cluster that to the sizes the customer needs. We can scale in if the user no longer, no longer needs certain amount of uh, capacity. We'll match the size and the requirement, both in capacity and in performance, that the users need at exactly the time that they need. So it's almost like a real-time consumption-based model. Uh, from that standpoint. Exactly. So it's cloud native in the sense not only of the technology behind it, but also in the way it's consumed. The gotcha. same way you would consume compute, you can now consume file systems within the cloud. So if I'm one of our viewers watching this, I might think, well, you know, so-and-so cloud has this service or these guys do that. What makes you guys different than kind of what the service, the cloud providers themselves are providing as well as maybe some of your competition? So what makes Elastifile unique is that this solution is completely cloud native in the way it's implemented. What that means is that we don't need any hardware to be co-located or located nearby to the cloud provider service. We are simply utilizing all of the resources available in the cloud itself. This immediately means that we can do this anywhere. 
There's no uh, uptime for bringing resources to a new location. If the cloud has services in a certain location, we can provide our services within it. This even works across regions and across cloud because Elastifile has the capability to replicate between clouds and between regions, we can essentially assure you that your data is available as a service between clouds. If you have certain applications running in Google Cloud, for instance, certain applications running on Azure, certain applications running um, on Amazon, then Elastifile can make sure that the data for your file system is replicated between these clouds mm -hmm. and expose them in wherever you need them at the time that you need them. So, so it's, it's multi-cloud by its uh, very nature then? It's multi-cloud by its very nature, and this is because we designed it as a cloud-native solution that uses the cloud resources themselves, meaning that we don't need any specific special resources in any environment that we run. We can spin up in any of these clouds and connect them through our replication technology. And I, and I assume that also means I have application portability between different uh, branded cloud providers even at that point, right? Exactly, wow. because okay. we at the background take care to make sure that the data is replicated and not only is it replicated, it's replicated and exposed in exactly the same way. Sure. So let's say you had the NFAS uh, exposed into your Kubernetes cluster inside Google Cloud and you spun up another Kubernetes cluster inside the Amazon, essentially Elastifile will make sure that the data is replicated between the two, take your container from one environment to the next, expand your environment between those, and the last file will support you at the back end with the storage being available. Okay. Well, that, that gives uh, the customer an amount, a tremendous amount of flexibility as far as cloud provider selection, right? Because then it, they can shift anytime they want to. They can shift and it frees them from the need to have to use certain things in certain locations only. So even within the cloud provider, it allows them to utilize those regions that are now private better those regions that they need for example for regulatory needs in the area they are located so if a user needs for some reason to keep certain data only in Europe Elastifile will keep that data in Europe but if it wants to run other applications in Asia they'll be able to run other applications in Asia and Elastifile will manage what data goes where and what data cannot leave certain locations because of regulatory issues, for example. Hmm, okay. So, Alon, if I'm a user, I, I mean, let's say I'm intrigued at this point, it sounds pretty you know, frictionless to get started. What, what, what's that uh, experience look like for me? So the way we built it is that your experience in using the service is exactly the same experience as you would do with cloud native services from the cloud providers uh, themselves. Okay. For example, in Google, we are actually integrating into the Google console itself. So a user goes into his Google console, the same console where it launches VM inside Google Cloud, and they'll be able to launch the Elastifile file system directly from that console to wherever they need it or control all of those regions that they need it. Furthermore, not only is the UI integrated in such a way, but also the billing. So the user will get one bill from oh. his cloud wow. provider that includes this service. And again, as mentioned earlier, includes only what he used at a certain portion. So if he used it for some time, increase it at a certain point, decrease it at a later point, all of the analytics around the usage, they can use the tools provided by the tool, by the cloud provider, such as Stackdriver inside Google. Furthermore, Elastifile will also utilize resources such as object buckets within all of these zones and automatically manage the transfer of data between the primary file system and the object buckets. And what that allows the user to do is A, control cost, because those lower tiers at object obviously are much more cost effective, sure. but also handle snapshots and basically save those snapshots 
at a very cost-effective price uh, inside the object and use them whenever needed. And is that um, policy driven? Do you set like a policy after a file hasn't been accessed and move it to this bucket sort of a thing? Exactly, okay. and more so because this is a completely managed service, the user actually does not have to worry about what data to move when. Okay. This is completely handled within the logic that Elastifile manages here. Elastifile will control and migrate data between the tiers while at the same time exposing the complete file system to the user. So the user constantly sees all their files, even though Elastifile might have moved some of them to object and saved costs for the user. I think that's a really important feature because that's something that I don't, you know, even with other, say, cloud native type of file systems and things like that, I don't see them leveraging the full scope of the cloud in that way to, to you know, save money. And, if you can't do that, then how are you going to actually save costs, right? Yes, in legacy file systems, sometimes you needed to allocate part of your actual file system capacity for snapshots. Right. When that happens, you're actually paying for extra capacity of snapshots at the same price level right. of your primary file system. Sure. With this solution, because Elastifile manages moving that data into object, those snapshots, which are more rarely accessed, can be moved into object, and you can save a lot of cost on your entire solution in that way, while still getting all of the high availability and all of the enterprise-grade resiliency that you would expect from a file system. So you mentioned like WordPress and Kubernetes. Uh, it, it are, what are some specific use cases that you uh, see that work well for this model? So the key use cases that we see are those use cases for which distributed file systems are beneficial for the end application. As you mentioned, Kubernetes is a very major use case that we are seeing right now okay. because NFS can be mounted into a Kubernetes cluster, because it can be mounted into a container, because it's shareable across locations, because in Kubernetes when you have a file system, you can read right into that file system from wherever the container results. Sure. This provides a perfect solution for anyone that is running containers in the cloud and for anyone that is running containers in hybrid environments between clouds or between cloud and on-prem. Okay. A second use case that we are seeing are all of those use cases that require high performance on a file system in a scalable manner. So EDA that we noted there earlier, life sciences, a lot of the new AI applications such as deep learning can benefit greatly from collecting data in one location as a file system and then using that data inside the cloud for deep learning and for building the models and deploying them in the cloud. Okay. So uh, those are really good, I, I guess, what I would describe as modern use cases. What about sort of the, the traditional applications like SAP and things like that? Do they have a role to play here? So certainly SAP okay. is another major use case that we are seeing because we are seeing a lot of migration right now of those legacy applications into the cloud. Okay. And when you move these applications into the cloud, there are certain things that these applications have grown accustomed to in the file system servicing them in their on-premises implementation. For example, the need to easily back up their data. Sure. For example, to share the data for high availability between different uh, instances. Okay. So both for classical uh, applications and for those new implementation of these applications inside the cloud, file system, and especially a file system that gives enterprise resiliency, are a perfect match. Okay, awesome. So, I, you know, we talked a lot about the cloud. Is there any, uh, any role for on-prem uh, in this situation? So definitely, and one of the benefits of our software-defined approach is that you can run the same file system also on-premises in your environment. And that environment can be a bare metal environment, it can be a virtualized environment, and more recently we're seeing containerized environments. So if you have a Kubernetes running uh, in oh, yeah. on-prem, sure. then essentially you can deploy Elastifile services on-prem as well and connect 
in a hybrid way the cloud implementation with your on-prem implementation. For, so for example, you can develop your containerized applications on-prem, but then migrate them to scale them inside the cloud. Okay, well, Alon, thanks for joining us today. I mean, I asked you what's going on at Elastifile, and there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on there, isn't there? Thank you, we're very excited about what's happening and about what this service can bring to our customers. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland.